Hi, my name is Jay from University of Waterloo Arts faculty, and this is Nagin, University of Waterloo Arts alumni. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Um, so my name is Nagin. Uh, I am a 2019 arts alumni. So I studied, uh, I did the arts and business program with co-op at UW, and I majored in speech communication, um, tried to love it a lot. Um, and right now I work as a headhunter or as a recruiter um, for a company called Artemis, which is in Waterloo. So what is Artemis? Like, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so at Artemis, we help high growth tech companies, um, mainly in KW, Kitchener Waterloo, and also in the GTA, but especially with COVID and work from home, that's kind of expanded. Um, so we help those high growth tech companies find talent, um, usually at the executive level. Um, sometimes we do strategic roles like product management as well. So we really, um, take the headhunting approach. So I spend a lot of time creeping LinkedIn profiles and reaching out to candidates that I think could be a great fit for the client and kind of hearing their story, telling my client's story, um, and then hopefully finding a great match. Basically, I call myself a matchmaker, but um, for professional life, which is kind of fun. That's very romantic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, love it. Um, so what made you choose Waterloo of Arts? In grade 12, I realized that co-op is really important, partially because I had no idea what I wanted to do um, when I grew up. Um, and I loved the five co-op terms and that UW had the largest co-op program. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually did my high school co-op at uh, Waterloo, so at Renison University College. Um, I went to the open house that I'm sure a lot of like 17 year olds go to. And I loved, I fell in love with the Renaissance and I was trying to find a, a co-op. So free labor, cause you're in high school, you don't get paid. And I was like, oh my goodness, I want to do marketing here. Yeah. So I emailed them and I was like, hi, you don't know me. My name is Nagin. Do you want free labor and marketing? I swear I'm, I'm pretty good at a couple things. And they're like, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I drove to UW cause I live like 25 minutes away. Mm -hmm. um, drove to UW every day in my last year of uh, high school. And I just like, I fell in love with campus, fell in love with the people and the staff, um, and I liked arts and business in particular because of the co-op, but then also I could test things out in my first year because yeah. um, I didn't know what major I wanted, so I tried a few different classes um, before I figured out what I wanted to do. Could you Nothing describe your career path? Could you describe uh, it from like your co-op or like maybe like a fun high school like job all the way to where you are now? Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna take you through a journey. Okay. Um, my I start at McDonald's. Like that's my first job. So service industry. What a time to be alive. Um, did some retail. Hated retail. Um, so I did that, and then I became a server. I've been a server kind of throughout my life. And I think what I was gaining in those experiences, which I didn't see at the time, was how to deal with conflict, especially yeah. in your face conflict, like service industry, like they're just screaming at you and they don't realize that you're, you're a human being, right. which is good. It's good to learn those skills. Um, and then I did that um, co-op at Renison as a high school student in marketing and undergraduate relations. Um, and then my first co-op was at Velocity, at my first university co-op was at Velocity. So um, really into the entrepreneurship space. A lot of the people I lived with at Velocity are now like on the Forbes 30 under 30 list, like getting to know really, really great successful people in that co-op was awesome. Then I, so I tried everything as you can kind of tell. So then I was like, I love communication. I should work for a speech writer. So I got the great um, honor of working with Matt Bondi and Faridin's team, which was such a great experience. Yeah. Then I was like, oh, I hear tech is like the next big thing. I should, I should work in tech. And so I got a co-op at Point Click Care um, as um, a junior business systems analyst, which really just means that the system they use internally called NetSuite, I got to customize and configure it. Awesome job. Amazing team. Loved that team. And I somehow like convinced the sales team to bring me on in a part-time fashion while I was still in school. And then I joined um, Point Click Care for a short while full-time. And then I want to try my own thing because I was like, I'm never going to be 22, maybe 23. I don't know how old I was. Um, and this young and dumb again. So let's just do something on my own. And then I joined Artemis and here we are. So now I'm a headhunter. Oh my gosh. That's such a complex whirlwind. <laughs> yeah. How'd you make yourself stand out to your employers? Um, I'm trying like, of course, my first like high school experience, but was there yeah. any 
Mm, so definitely having the high school co-op helped because I think a lot of people come into that program not having professional work experience. Like they've done part-time jobs. They've never worked in an office. Yeah. So it helped me to say I've worked in an office and within an, like a, such a large institution. Um, and I think one of the differences uh, to part-time jobs and full-time work is navigating red tape and politics. And mm -hmm. it's such a large organization. You have experience doing that. Um, the other thing was um, I was really involved in first year. So I lived at Renison yeah, and I got involved with Rena6, which was our kind of events committee. So I ran a lot of events and got to know the staff. Um, and actually the kind of the way I got my first co-op, I decided to apply to Velocity, which is no longer a thing to live in. It used to be a residence mm -hmm. and you can live in residence with all these other like-minded entrepreneurial people. Um, and then just like, go to these Velocity events. And so I really wanted to work as part of Velocity's core team for my first co-op. And so yeah. I got to kind of take initiative and run events for our little residence community. Um, and so they got to know me and that's kind of how I got my foot in the door. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say like part-time jobs if you can, and just, even if you can do unpaid volunteer internships the summer before university, then you can use that in your resume. And that really helps because it is quite competitive. What would your like tips be for resumes or how mm -hmm. to network with other people, especially during the pandemic? It's very hard. <laughs> Yeah, so it's so funny because these are my two worlds colliding because now I'm a headhunter. So um, I would say to reach out to people, like I've had so many actually UW's current art students or recent alumni reach out to me and be like, hi, I saw you on a video or I saw your name come up on LinkedIn and I would love to just chat with you for half an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and I've done that to people too. Like I've reached out to people that I admire um, and most people will say yes. Um, and so it's just a matter of asking. I know Zoom fatigue is real. Um, so recently, if I'm honestly, I try to have as many like co like phone conversations. Yeah. I don't think I've used so many minutes on my phone in my life. <laughs> um, but just to talk with them. Um, so in terms of networking, I would say just ask. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of resume, uh, so I'm recently been a huge fan of, especially if you're like a co-op, so you're junior in your mm -hmm. career. One page resumes, I love. Yeah. Um, and there's so many cool, like it can be so easy on Canva. If you go on Canva and it has all these templates, you just like pop in your details Definitely, and add some yeah. color because no one prints resumes anymore. Like mm -hmm. it's always, so to a recruiter who's going through 200 applications, seeing some color and something pretty right. um, helps. So yeah, go to Canva, find a template, try and make it one page. Make mm -hmm. it pretty. Those are some great tips. Yeah. How would you like recommend um, students to get involved with like university clubs and their like network? How would you recommend them to get involved? When I was at UW, they had this like um, club fair in SLC. Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming there's a virtual version of that now. And so you can kind of go and just meet people who are currently part of that club mm -hmm. um, and just get to know what they're doing. Uh, there is a club for everything. And one of my biggest regrets is not doing some of the more like quirky clubs. Like there's a Hogwarts, like Quidditch. Yeah. Like why didn't I play Quidditch? I don't know. I'm sure you would meet like a lot of like-minded people in those clubs. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Like, I find that, like, the first year experience, you meet people that just end up being your long-term, like, relationships. So it's so funny. The one girl I met on my first day of class, I work with now at Artemis, which is, like, oh. Artemis is 10 people. So, like, we're real small. And she's yeah. the reason I got the job. And, like, we're best friends. We've gone to, like, Cancun. Like, so, and she was my French. Uh, I thought I was going to major in French once, too. That didn't happen either. <laughs> but in French, in first year, um, I met her then. And then we just became best friends. Wow. What would you say your first, like your favorite Waterloo experience would be? Like your favorite memory? Oh my goodness, there's so many. You can list a few. We have we have some time. This will take some time. Um, so I'm gonna fangirl a little bit. So my favorite professor in university, hands down, um, his name is Rob Dana. She's the mm, I don't know his title, chairman of speech communication, something fancy. Mm -hmm. and um, I took a lot of his classes, and I think a lot of my favorite memories are in those classes. Um, for a few reasons, a lot of the feedback I hear about just from my peers, and then now once I'm graduated, I talk to current students, is mm -hmm. they feel like sometimes a number, because they go from high school in these small classes to these massive, like, 600 people lectures. Um, my advice would, to you would be, if you can afford an elective, take a speech comm class, because the classes are capped at 30. These are life skills that in any job, in any personal relationship. If you can find a class with Rob, take any class with Rob. It literally doesn't matter. Just take a class with Rob. Yeah. Um, because you feel like you're in a community. Mm -hmm. And so we did so many cool assignments. Um, so for example, one of my favorite memories was um, our final summative assignment. It wasn't an exam. 
it was you had to go up and say a speech. It could be about anything. It could be a poem. It could be a memory. It could be a story, literally anything. Yeah. And you had a, a goal to elicit an emotion from the class, like 20 people. Um, so joy, sadness, fear, whatever. And mm -hmm. you gave that emotion a piece of paper to Rob before. Wow, yeah. So no one in the class knows what the emotion is, but you do and Rob knows and you tell your story. And at the end, Rob asks a couple questions to get a sense of if you succeeded, does the class feel what you want them to feel mm -hmm. or think what you want them to think? And so it's this really cool way of, because I'm a communication nerd, of us seeing like we have agency over how we make others feel. Um, mm -hmm. and we can, in a strange way, kind of control how others feel with the right words and the right language, um, hopefully for the best, not for the worst. So what are your future plans? Like you mentioned your current position, you mentioned your past positions. Like um, Future projects. So I am on, um, I guess it's a board um, called The Feminist Shift. So uh -huh. it's a part of YW, unrelated to my full-time job. So if anyone who doesn't know what YW is, um, it's a candle-wide not-for-profit and they do a bunch of really great things for women um, and children. Mm -hmm. And so they have things ranging from, let's say, daycare, um, like subsidized daycare, all the way to uh, shelters for homeless teens, to services for expecting moms who might not have the support from their family or a partner or a partner who's not there, um, to like ju just everything under the sun under like female empowerment and support this organization does. I just kind of restarted, recently started writing for that. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a definitely a project that I'm excited about um, and hope to continue doing more of. Um, That's great. Yeah. Like I often find that when choosing their careers, they have this one side mindset that your career has to be your personality, your main vocation. But it's kind of great to see that you have a lot of passion for something else other than like your career. I wish that someone told me that when I was younger, because I think there's, like you said, just so much pressure on figuring out what do you want to do? Yeah. Who do you want to be when you grow up? Exactly. Which touches on a lot of things that are problematic. First is like, you are not what you do. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, there's like all of these side hustles. Like I have done many side hustles. So I've been a freelance writer for a number of clients. I've written blogs on Medium. Uh, and you can make an income doing that, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so, and you can kind of pick whatever side hustle you want. So yeah, totally. It's less pressure to pick one career and stick with it. So don't let your major or your program or your job define you because you'll probably change your job a bunch. Uh, and I see that now as I talk to executives that they like started out in X and they're like all the way over here and they didn't take a linear path. They were like this all the way. Um, and that gives me peace in knowing that uh, I don't need to figure it out. Mm -hmm. One of my close friends' friends gave some great advice that I always like to remember, and it's that in your the early days of your career, including university, you feel like you have to figure it all out, um, and that what you do defines you. Um, but then if you look at someone that you aspire to be, maybe you want to be in marketing, and you look at a VP marketing, and you yeah. go on their LinkedIn, and you know when you like look at their experience, and you scroll down, and it says show more, and no one ever clicks show more they just look at the recent five experiences yeah the girl's advice was right now you're living in the show more and no one is going to care in five years what you did just like experiment try a bunch of things um specifically try a ton of different co-ops mm -hmm. um i did most of my co-ops in tech or at uw which was great because i love uw and i love tech a part of me wishes i did something different i don't know what that would look like because mm -hmm. i don't even, i don't know what i don't know but I did three of my co-ops the same organization. I kind of wish I tried different organizations. Like just take advantage of those five opportunities if you're in co-op. Um, that's my advice. That's amazing. Oh, and that's all the time that we have for this meeting. Thank you so much for joining me, Nagin. Thank you so much for chatting with me.